Okay, so we go down here. I want to ac activate this uh, portal now, just to, just so I know that I did, because I'll probably forget to do it later. Um, these cauldrons, we won't see what they do now, but they essentially are like a are fast travel for this game. Uh, like this hub world is decently, it's pretty big, not too big, but you know. It houses all the worlds in the game, and it it feels it feels like you're at home, I guess, even though you're at the witch's lair. Okay, so. What you were saying there, Fiery Fate, I'm pretty sure you all know what that is, but I don't want to give away any, too many, I, the I don't want to give any spoilers away for those of you who, who haven't played this game. And if you haven't, then what are you doing? Play this game already, jeez. But anyways, this is Brent Hilda, this is Grant Hilda's sister. Um, every time, she's found only in the hub world, you won't see her in any world in the game. So you'll you'll find her several times throughout the throughout Gruntilda's lair, and every time you do she'll tell you three things about Grunty. Now keep them in mind because they're not just like unneeded facts. Uh, you'll need them for a a late a very late part in the game. Um if you don't memorize some of these, you could be in big trouble, so... Well, no wonder she's so ugly and messed up. No wonder she wants to be uh, better looking. Waiting in what now? I don't even know. I'll be waiting in, I guess, at the top. I don't know. But yeah. For some reason, you can put back pieces um, on those little like paintings there, but I don't know why you would do that. Honestly. Okay, come on. We can't even open that, okay. Not even gonna bother. But yeah, we go here, and then we can find this guy, but also another cauldron. Yeah, great. Two. Yeah, get two the same color to activate a shortcut, and that's pretty much what they do. Again, they're pretty much the warp, the warp silos for Kazooie. Like, the warp silos were a uh, Tui's thing, but the, these are pretty much how they get this game does, like, warp points. Um, admittedly, I feel uh, Tui does it a lot better, but this one still does it okay. Because in Tui, uh, no matter what warp silo you went in, you could go, you could jump out um, any, like, other one. Like, say I'm in uh, Gwagmire, and I want to go back to Jinjo Village, I can do that without any problems. Uh, but, yeah, I'm rambling at this point. The start. Oh, man. Oh, man. I think everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say, oh man. Okay. Eee! Yeah. There's a shark in here. I do not like sharks at all. So. 
Yeah. Let's see what this guy is doing though. Right, so we're pretty much in a mini bus right now. So you gotta, what you do is basically wait for him to stop attacking and then go in for the attack. He gets faster every time, but he shouldn't be any, uh, he shouldn't be difficult to take down. So we go inside his shell and we will find some goodies. Ah. Okay, these guys, if you, if you take them down when they're, like, not on the, they, they haven't fallen over, and you do, like, the, pretty much the pound move in the game, you'll get two, um, you'll do, yeah, you'll get two honeycomb pieces instead of the regular one, so... Alright, I have to go down there, so... Hello? Hello? I hate this so much. It's supposed to be the snack of the shark over here. Yeah. What the hell? No, he's not coming. That's just trolling me. Come on, man. You can't do this to me. And I'm gonna have to get a, that empty honeycomb at some point. Otherwise, it's not gonna feel complete. So these are pretty much a uh, new move. What? Well, 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 one of our new moves to this world um, is essentially we go to these little jump pad things, and Kazooie will launch off and gain a lot of highs. And they're not used too often, but. They are helpful. Like, they're, they're very situational, but that's kind of expected. So. Du -du 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 -du. I do like that the, uh, the worlds feel... Like, like to some... For this game's credit, I do like that the, the game's, uh... Wor the game's worlds feel like different universes. Like... Okay, let me get out. Eesh! Alright. Yeah, this game, pretty much every world has a different theme, as you would expect. But what I, what I like about that is that it feel, makes every world feel unique. It's like it has a... It has that... It has its own, like feel to it, you know. So, Mad Monster Mansion feels completely different to Treasure Treasure Trove Cove. Treasure Trove Cove feels significantly different to, say, you know, um, what, what's a good example? Um, Mumbo's Mountain, I don't know. So, I'm drawing kind of a blank, but you know what I mean. All the worlds feel different, and I... Mu very much like that. Cause it, it doesn't it doesn't feel repetitive that way. Like you're doing the same basic stuff, which you can't really complain about because you're doing that in every game to begin with. So why would it why you would complain about that is beyond me. Like if you if you complain about like doing the same objectives for every world, even though 
like that's what it sets out to do. You need, you need to seriously like. I don't want to say rethink your life because I'm not harsh like that, but <laughs> you need to rethink your goals or something. I don't know. Seriously, man, because complaining, complaining, uh, uh, com complaining about a game because of what it sets out to do, and it, it's just kind of silly. It. If it's just like, what? If if it's something you don't like, then fair enough. You don't you, you don't have to like the game. This is not just just about Kazooie. Just games in general. Like every game has its own structure. If you think, uh, and I'm not saying you have to love the tr uh, love a structure for a game. No, um, that's the. That's very much up for debate whether you like a game's style or not. I may, I'm just saying, if you think that like every game has to change up every like what when you go into every world and like everything has to be done. Okay, well, people came in, so I had to cut for a bit there. Uh, but anyways, if I can recall what I was actually saying, uh, wait, did I actually get the pen? I think I did. Alright. Essentially, um, if you, if you, uh, feel that every game has to be different in each world, like, it has to change its formula every time, and... Every world has to be a original in terms of like the concept and everything. Your you need to look somewhere else, and you need to stop playing video games because that's not the point of that's not the point of gaming. It's like every game is supposed to feel different at their core than like the competition or, or like just any other game, you know. And like expand on, upon its own like d identity, if you will. It's not supposed to change itself up like con constantly, and then alienate itself. Because I feel some people uh, complain about uh, repetitiveness in video games the wrong way sometimes. Because when you complain about redoing what well, it depends what you mean by redoing things but if you mean redoing things in the sense that oh it's a collector fund so it's annoying to have to do all this collecting for every world it's a collector fund so you should expect that um uh, oh i have to collect power stars that's annoying you should expect that in a mario game if you don't like that play uh, if you don't want complex stuff, play something like Mario 1 or New Super Mario Bros. Something simple. And then, there you go, you'll have your fix. Um, if you just want to have, like, if you want to have an RPG experience, then play RPGs. It really depends on your type of, uh, the type of game games you're interested in, and also what... Um, what you want to try as well, and what keeps you hooked. Because if you aren't interested in a game, more often than not, you're probably going to either not finish it, or take a lot longer to. Because, you know, some... I tend to finish most of, most of the games I play, um... Like, even if it's really bad, like 06, I still complete it. Partially for the fact that I did an LP on it, I so I have to complete it anyway. But even still, I complete most. I complete pretty much all the games I get because it doesn't. It doesn't really feel right. Like I haven't completed all the games in my library because if if I said if I said I did, I would be lying to myself. 
and just being a downright hypocrite. That's not that's not to say I don't intend on completing them at some point though. Everyone has a backlog, so yeah, you can't you don't you can't have to just go through it and yeah, pretty much it. Everyone at I believe everyone has a backlog of sorts. Maybe, well, some bigger than others, but even still. Alright. Okay, made down safely. That's what we like to see. Okay, so I want to go over here now. And... Go up here. If we go... I'll get those notes, notes later, but if we go to Leaky here, so essentially what he wants is us to give a, give him two eggs. Somehow that makes this water drain. Don't ask how that works, it just does. And now we can enter the, sa the sandcastle. Uh, get these no five notes first, obviously, and then we can walk in. Now this place, while it it holds four notes and one jiggy, it also holds um, a, the cheats for this game. Like this is the code room, basically. You put in any kind of cheat, like feathers to get more feathers, eggs to get more eggs, etc., and you can. And you find that you late there. If you go back to Bo uh, Banjo's house, you can look at the bottles. Uh, you can look at the bottles painting, and it will essentially activate a puzzle mini game. And then once you beat one of them, uh, bottles will tell you a, co a code. You insert the code here, and then something crazy will happen. But all we, what we have to do now, uh, uh, what we have to do here though, is spell out, spell out Banjo Kazooie, the name of the game. So, yeah. there's a time limit, though it's very considerate of the amount. Of, it's very considerate of the the time, like how much you, how much time you have to do it. So, don't be too worried here. Though you can't, you can't hit the same number number, wow. You can't hit the same letter twice, so if you're trying to find a the same number like a number you've already hit before, you're gonna have to find another like you, you're gonna have to find the that word, that letter again somewhere else. So kill this guy, and there we go. Oh, get it. Alright, so we got that taken care of. Make sure I get all the. I've gotten all the notes here, and yeah, all fine and dandy. Alright. So now, what I was trying to do earlier was go over here and activate. Some sort of a mini, uh, mini uh, side thing. Well, not really a side thing because you get a jiggy from it. But essentially, we go up here and we find. Oh, I don't want to fall here. Okay, but anyways, we go up here and we found an X here. We stomped on that or whatever, and. It went somewhere over here. But anyways, I want to land here though because there's a lot of stuff here. Um, first off, if we go over here, there's a Chiggy over to the far right side. I want to make sure I don't fall in the water here. The last thing I want to get, last thing I want to happen is to get attacked by the shark. Eesh. So I always get nervous doing things like this. Here we go. And 
And no, there is no mumbo, mumbo in transformation in, in this world. I believe it goes mu mumbo transformation. In two worlds, no mumbo transformation. And then you get a mumbo transformation, etc. I might be wrong about that, but I'm not sure. It also makes it really easy to get the correct amount of Mumbo tokens needed for all the transformations because even though a world may not have Mumbo, you'll still find like tokens throughout every world. So it makes it really... the game is really generous in terms of like handing out uh, collectibles. Grab this. Here we go. Du -du. Yeah, those mine guys only try to attack you when you're on the surface of water. For whatever reason, they don't they don't even think to attack you underwater. Which is odd considering you'd think they'd be able to do that. Since they're on they're on they're on water anyway, so I don't see why they wouldn't be able to do that. Oh well. They can do what they want. I'm not gonna judge. Here yeah, we have. Yeah, see they just ignore me as soon as I go under under the water. Okay, so we go over here. And no We've caught up with this. And also Oh man. Do I want do I wanna do this? Do I really wanna do this? Budge me. Why'd you have to do that to me, game? Why'd you have to tor torment me so? Ugh. Like, sharks, sharks are like my childhood nightmare. I'm not even joking. They're just terrifying to me. But anyways, we're following the, the arrows and they eventually lead us up here. To this arrow. Where is that going to lead us? Well, it's going to say question mark, but don't you fret, because well, after we get these last few notes, it's right there, so yeah, really easy. And now, just open the chest and there you go. There we go. Now, before we exit this place, we have that, and we also have that place. While we're going there, well, empty honeycomb piece. Oh, okay. We can kill the shark if we, if we're able to land a like. Pound attack properly, 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 or shoot a couple of eggs at it, and then it will eventually die. But I'm not even gonna risk that. Now that island over there, I'm not gonna bother going to them at, in this playthrough. But they're they essentially those like secret areas hold uh, the infamous stop and swap eggs or stop and swap items, I should say. 
And, well, this session's almost coming to a close, so I'll get into detail about that next time, but though those are some interesting f those uh, brought some interesting discussions to, to the table I'm just gonna say okay let's see our stats so three six uh, no 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 yep yep we're up to date on what we have what we need to need to have so yeah that's all good uh, before I end this part off though I'm gonna activate the portal for the I'm gonna activate the next world so to avoid having to deal with this later so we jump down here And now, of all times, Bottles tells you that you can just press Z and it activates all the pieces on the, on the painting. Why he didn't tell you this earlier, I have no idea, but whatever, I'm not complaining. Here we have Clanker's Cavern, but again, this is the end of this session, so we'll be going there next time. But, not alone. If you've watched the Ramble Express, you may know who it is, but someone will be joining us next time. I'll, I'll leave you. I'll leave that up to up for you guys to decide who you think it is. And well, that's all I have to say. So, <laughs> yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the first session of Banjo Kazooie. I'm. I know I'm really enjoying this game so far, and I, it's a pleasure to go back to this game for the channel. So, yeah, with that said, I'll see you guys next time. See you all then. Peace.